announced, technically re-revealed with now gameplay since last month, we've got over here Legion of Judgment, Fallen Angel, what is described as a no-wire action RPG metroidvania hack and slasher about some John Wick looking warrior trying to bring peace on earth after this werewolf pandemic. Y'all remember the Blade movies? Well this game's a little like that about it's John Wick versus Twilight. Anyway, Fallen Angel's releasing for PCs and the PlayStation consoles only sometime later this year. Course. I sense a heavy burden within thee. This place of crimson shadows has summoned me. Game Kitchen, on the other hand, just came out with the new update on Blasphemous 2. So the game is now coming over to PC, Switch, and both generation of consoles as well around holidays this year. We didn't get a new trailer for Blasphemous either, but worse that the game's now coming in about a month, showcasing its gameplay. In any case, Team 17 also said that the new game is gonna be bigger in scale and better in visuals. But that is all. <laughs> in the suffering land brought me to this place. Forgive my manners. My name is Miriam. Coming as a first work of its developers, been in the making for a while now, at number 3 we have Awaken Astral Blade. This is also then a Metroidvania Souls-like skill-based 2D 3D single player available to be wish to sit only on Steam. Game set to be a PC exclusive, it's gonna be released by the end of the year, here's a trailer. Awaken Astral is a story-heavy, almost narrative-based, fairy tale inspired story. atrocities were being committed, not only on the battlefields, but also beyond them. The last case of Benedict Fox just went on and got itself a new trailer with release date of April 27, 2023, and it's now coming to PCs, Xbox consoles only, acting as a Microsoft exclusive. The last case of Benedict Fox is a Lovecraftian atmospheric Metroidvania side scroller mystery adventure. It's actually been in development for over two years now, and this is how it really looks. Suffered more than we anticipated. It's afflicted and riddled with gangrene. Knew all along I was still alive. The shade is so dense and the madness so fierce that I can bear the old lest they pull me in two. Coming 
from a Kickstarter campaign that's been around for over six months now, vastly inspired by Hollow Knight, Ori, and Celeste. These three games, as stated by developers, we got a game over here called Nara Facing Fire, which is a reaction-based action metroidvania platformer. I don't really have much to talk about over here with this one, except the trailer really shows what you need to know about the game. Nara, all you really need to know is now still trying to get her enough funds on campaign to make the game possible and said to be coming out, hopefully, by the end of the year for PCs only. And number six, once again, after months of waits. We just got a new trailer for one of the much awaited Metroidvania games, The Making, something called Nine Years of Shadows. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick to what I've said before the most colorful looking pixel art game in the making right now. And although heavily inspired by classics, it's actually a pretty unique story driven in nature. Nine Years of Shadows releasing for PCs and Switch only March 27 this year. and. Here's how it looks. Sitting on Steam through a demo for about a month now, coming from the same publishers of Scamba, this is that was an action adventure semi open world puzzle game that came out last. Anyway, we got over here a platform side scrolling Metroidvania going by the name Ellipse. Not a pixel art game, but a 2D cinematic in nature. Halfway an Ori and another part Hollow Knight in gameplay. Just take a look. Ellipse is releasing for PCs, Switch, and the PlayStation consoles only in about a few months or a year. Coming from the same developers of Rabbi Rabbi, a bullet hell metroidvania that's got over a hundred out of a hundred on Steam for freaking almost a decade now, we have another pixel art metroidvania action game in the making since last year, going by the name TV or Tevi, which is beside the metroidvania, an action adventure hack and slash bullet hell all over again. Act well then also souls like. I don't really know about the story. I they, they haven't even come up with one yet. All you know is the game's releasing for PCs, Switch, and the PlayStation consoles only, just like the previous game in about a few months. The first title, Mira and the Legend of the Jinns, a 2D pixel art metroidvania in a world inspired by Moroccan culture and spiritual traditions. Mira and the Legend of Jeans, on the other hand, is now coming to PCs and Switch only mid to late this year. This update actually comes with a new trailer in case you miss out the game itself. This is also a Metroidvania inspired by Moroccan culture, tradition and folklore, wherein you play as this Mira, this female protagonist, on a journey of discovery of the last gene on Earth. That's a supernatural entity we believe to be around the Middle East only. Games are to be coming out sometime later this year. A fantasy world that we called Kingdom of Amazgash. In the game, you play as Yuba, who lives in a village called Jiziri. 
located in the heart of Amazgash. A tracer hunter and explorer who travels the lands in search of ancient relics. Yuba is also a Gnawi, a magician that can heal his surroundings from negative energy and drive out evil, with his music marked by low-toned, rhythmic melodies played on a skin-covered lute called Gembri. During a routine job, Yuba discovered an ancient necropolis, where he encounters Mira, a mysterious djinn who seems to be... Setting on Steam through a demo since a couple of weeks ago, we've got over here now Nocturnal, which is not exactly a pixel design, but an action platform metroidvania in the finest way possible. Personally, I like to think it's what you get by mixing a Prince of Persia, the later ones though, not the old classics, and a little bit of Dead Cells. How about this game isn't as smooth, or is it? Not sure, and last but not least, said to be coming out in the next few months for all consoles as well. To us in dark times, soldier. Coming from the same developers of Brawlout, Muffin Knight, a dozen other 2D platformers recently discovered, here's the company's biggest IP in the making since a couple of years ago, something called Trinity Fusion. What's, as you could probably tell, definitely inspired by some of the best, be it the Hades, Dead Selves and even Fist, you know, the rabbit protagonist platformer, 3D game. Anyway, Trinity Fusion is said to be in its final stages of development and due out for all consoles mid to late 2023. Humble Mill, the Chinese developers, just came out with a new trailer for Oblivion Overwrite. That is a side-scrolling roguelike metroidvania this, that they've been cooking for over a year now. No release days, only that their game will be coming to PCs first, then Switch and other consoles as well. Here's a trailer. Oblivion Overwrite is about this dystopian robotic era where humans are no longer around. The AIs are just trying to figure out why they even exist. Stuff like that. Take a look. Sitting on Steam through a demo, once again, coming from the same developers of Visions of Reset, that's a time manipulation metroid event that came out like four years ago, their newest game here called Moonlight Pulse. Set on a different universe with anthropomorphic furries, set in some distant future on a planet infected by this huge warm like monster. Check it out, game set to be coming to PCs only and do out in about a few months we hear. Thank <laughs> you. 
Scheduled to come out around November this year, finally. And number 14, first time is getting actually mentioned because of the gameplay trailer we just got. It's a game called Tozuwa Night Double OTA. A Souls like platform Metroidvania, Castlevania inspired dope. Technically cloned off of Castlevania games where you play as Richter though and his chain. Order of the Alchemist is coming from a series of the exact same style Metroidvania that started life around May last year and it is now coming to PCs and Switch. <laughs> Uh, from a tad over two months ago reveal though, we have a trophy knight, I'm not gonna say inspired by Shovel Knight games because although the protagonist is a knight and it's literally the same style, but trophy knight is actually a level based single player exploration, just like Castlevania. This game is even souls like to some extent. Well, here's how the game looks, it's said to be coming to PCs only sometime later this year. Anima Flux, on the other hand, simply said, described by its developers as a couch co-op metroidvania, we got here where you play as two genetically enhanced soldiers or a duo of special agents of a theocratic dictatorial regime. So the game is set in some distant future and your job is just mostly fighting mutants through a desolate dystopian space city to hopefully save all humanity. Yeah, Anima Flux is said to be coming out for PCs only later this year. Sitting on Steam through a free demo, said to be coming out soon for PCs only, we've got Cellini, a Kickstarter project that was revealed about 6 months ago. Not really a pixel art, but a platform mystery action puzzler, sort of halfway inspired by Insight, and as irrelevant as it may sound, the open world game No Man's Sky. Anyway, Cellini is a PC exclusive limited to Steam, and this is how it looks. And last but not least, uh, sitting on scene with overwhelmingly positive score as of 24 hours ago, we have Dead Cells' latest DLC going by return to Castlevania. Bringing over just anything that was a win point in Castlevania Symphony of the Night games to the Dead Cells world gameplay and even more. That's Castlevania characters, enemies, weapons, easter eggs, in addition to Richter and even Alucard to play as. Dead Cells' return to Castlevania is available for all consoles and takes you down about $10. Thank <laughs> you. 